So the whole play is combined with greener energy, efficient use of energy, conversion of more and more applications towards electrification will help us to move towards zero carbon. Now we have a special personality from Huawei Digital Power. Please, can you introduce yourself? Please? Sure, so I'm Sanjay Sainani. I'm the global SVP and CTO at Huawei for our digital power business. Welcome and very nice to meet you. Thank Let's you. start and dig, de dig deep to the first question. Uh, next month, the UAE will host the Global Sustainability Conference, COP28. In addition, the country has announced its net zero uh, goals. Can you tell us how technologies can be a lie for uh, Middle Eastern governments uh, to support their net zero journey? Absolutely. So uh, this is top of mind you know, for everyone, given the fact that we are all trying to control uh, or put a control on the climate change, which is one degree centigrade difference uh, by 2050. And uh, this is a global effort. Every country has to come together yeah, every part of the world has to come together to be able to meet these climate goals. Uh, in fact, many countries in the GCC have set up special panels, special ministries. For example, the UAE has a Ministry of Climate Change and Environment set up to pretty much make sure that the planning and process and execution of their net zero goals by 2050 are in play. There are three main challenges here. One of the challenges is the whole play of energy generation. Over the last many decades, the whole world has been running on fossil fuels. And that is where you have bulk of the carbon being released into the environment. So the play of moving towards renewable energies is key towards the net zero carbon footprint, as we would call it, from a country perspective. And the Middle East today, has plans, very aggressive plans, in terms of double-digit gigawatt of energy production, especially renewable energy, to, achieve, to reach these goals. When you talk about renewable energy, bulk of the renewable energy in the Middle East can be produced using solar gains. Uh, we, are, uh, we, we, we live within amazing solar uh, energy gains here. And so that's one of the big plays. The second play is using energy more efficiently. And this is where use of more efficient technologies across all aspects of technology, whether it's construction, whether it is air conditioning, industrial usage, it's all about how do you consume less energy, how do you do more with less. This is the second play which is working out. Definitely there are technology enablers that help to make this play happen. For example, the use of newer materials, the use of IoT to gather all the data points. Only if you monitor and measure, you can manage. And so getting all the data, running machine learning AI algorithms to find sweet spots in terms of optimization of energy usage is the second area which will help towards the carbon, uh, net, net zero carbon play. Electrification of transportation is a big part of this play, AKA electrical vehicles. The minute you start moving transportation to electrical vehicles, your demand for electrical energy will increase. Right. We go back to the green energy production that will help that, will reduce the pollution. So the whole play is combined with greener energy, efficient use of energy, conversion of more and more applications towards electrification will help us to move towards zero carbon. Some of the key technologies here are efficient capture of solar energy, energy storage. Renewable energy is not consistent. Solar energy you have only during the day. So using newer technologies in terms of energy storage, battery technologies is going to propel this mission forward. Hydrogen play is very big in terms of uh, energy storage, so almost every country in the Middle East, especially UAE, Saudi, have big plans. In fact, they have hydrogen blueprints uh, to, to create a hydrogen economy. Not only use hydrogen as energy storage for themselves, but even export hydrogen to other parts of the world which can use this. So clearly, technologies in terms of materials, renewable energy, uh, energy storage, 
use of machine learning AI to optimize will help us to move in this phase. Finally, there is also a play of carbon capture and carbon sequestration. We have so much carbon in the, in the atmosphere. Capturing this carbon and pushing it back into the earth is the final layer of technology that will help us to move towards net zero goals. Great, great. Thank you for elaborating on that. Let's go to the next question. Can you elaborate on Huawei's digital power strategy and framework in general? Sure, so at, so at Huawei, clearly we have a large role to play in terms of the whole ecosystem uh, that is out there. And Huawei Digital Power especially is focusing on using power electronics and information technology coming together to build better solutions to help creating a greener future. It starts with production of energy in the space of renewable energy. So Huawei does a lot of work on uh, photovoltaic re uh, renewable energy play. This is where we have inverter technologies that help us to efficiently convert solar energy into electrical energy. And this is uh, uh, today being addressed at grid scale, industrial scale, and even residential scale. The second layer of this is energy storage. Huawei has a very large play in terms of energy storage systems, battery energy storage systems. These are today being used at a grid scale to store energy. They are being used to stabilize the grid, especially when you have microgrids, the impedance of the grid starts suffering, and so you need energy storage to improve the impedance of the grid. So a lot of energy storage uh, solution sets at Huawei help that. We then are looking at using energy cloud technologies. This is where information across consumers and producers is put together to find the most efficient, optimized, effective way to move energy. Move energy that is greener, has lower carbon sources, uh, is more available, and has a better value at that point in time in terms of cost. So the energy cloud will, in that sense, move energy most efficiently based on its greenness, based on its cost, based on its availability. So these technologies can help countries, industries, ecosystems create a much lower carbon footprint. We then look at the digital infrastructure, which is a big part of the whole uh, energy evolution, uh, industrial revolution. In, in terms of creating digital infrastructure, Today we are looking at setting up of data centers. A few years ago, the whole of GCC's total data center footprint was about 50 megawatt. Current plans will reach 800 megawatt. So with that kind of data center explosion, you're looking at huge energy consumption on the digital footprint. So building of low carbon networks, more efficient data centers is key to driving and helping our customers in terms of their uh, carbon reduction, net zero goals. The next question, can you share any local, uh, any local case studies or uh, customer references? So without, without getting into the names, but currently Huawei has been working with uh, multiple power producers in the region in terms of their renewable energy play. Uh, we are eighth year in a row, one of the largest photovoltaic inverter players. So Huawei's inverters are being used to basically produce gigawatts of uh, electrical energy using solar gains. So that is one big area of Huawei uh, in, in the region. We recently have deployed uh, in excess of a thousand megawatt hour of energy storage. This further helps to maintain, sustain, and ensure availability of the grid uh, especially given the fact that you have a lot of high impedance sources getting connected to the grid. So that's the second area of focus. Our third area has been in terms of deploying uh, data centers using low carbon technologies. So today in the Middle East region, Huawei has built and deployed close to 150 megawatts of prefabricated data centers. These are using state of the art construction technology, low carbon construction, efficient power conversion, efficient cooling, and thereby helping to create a low carbon infrastructure for, digital, for the digital future of the region. Awesome, awesome. 
I have a small question that I, I just got in my mind. From your point of view, how do you see people like awareness about these kind of movements? Because it's very important right now. We see every major company on, on bigger scale or small scale is go towards zero emissions, the, uh, helping the environment, climate change, and all of these things. And individual scale. Did you see there is a lot of awareness, especially in the Middle East? Absolutely. I, I guess the governments have, have done an amazing role in terms of promoting, uh, promoting and ensuring that population is aware of the seriousness of the climate change and therefore what needs to be done. So to give you a very simple example, single-use plastics are all gone. Yeah, Today if you go shopping, you have to either pay for a plastic bag or you get a paper bag, uh, you know, for a cost, which helps to uh, push the customer, force a behavior where you bring your own reusable, recyclable bag. So clearly, you know, at the lowest denominator, you can see behaviors are changing. Exactly. You, you are seeing incentives coming in in terms of the electrical vehicle play. So the more you have incentives, the more you have lower taxation costs like has happened in many other countries, will further promote the move of uh, moving towards electrical mobility solutions, which we know to in the future will help us in the net carbon play. Almost every industry today, every company today is expected to report on the ESG. So they have to report in terms of what they are doing towards reduction of their carbon footprint. And not just their goals, but how they are going to do it. A lot of funding is today being made available based on your greenness. Right. So the amount of money you can borrow from the market will depend upon are you really green and the cost of money can be lower if you are green. And so when you put both incentives, carrot and stick approach, higher interest rates is a stick, lower interest rate is an incentive. So once you start doing that, you start seeing behavior changing right from the individual person on the, on the ground to large corporates who basically make this big decisions and will contribute towards the net zero play. Thank you so much for your time. It was Welcome. a pleasure Thank you. meeting you. Nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.